website is a community service of the New York Institute of Technology. Covering the news of Nassau and Suffolk County's Long Island News Tonight with Ken Eckhart, Carol Pack, and the award-winning Ally News Team. Good evening. I'm Ken Eckhart, and here's what's happening. A third person has now been sentenced to life in prison with no parole in connection with the shooting death of a Suffolk County attorney back in 2008. The murder of 44-year-old James DiMartino of Nesconset was reportedly planned by his business associate in connection with a mortgage fraud scheme. 40-year-old Ronald Thornton of Nesconset was convicted last year of paying 25-year-old Darnell Festus and 23-year-old Donovan Racer, both of Queens, $10,000 to murder DiMartino. Thornton and Festus have already both been sentenced to life in prison. Today, 23-year-old Donovan Racer of St. Albans, who reportedly planned the shooting, was sentenced in Suffolk County Court to life in prison without parole. Racer's ex-girlfriend, 31-year-old Monique Randall of St. Albans, has pleaded guilty for her role in the killing and testified for the prosecution. She awaits sentencing. A 16-month investigation into heroin sales in Suffolk County today led to multiple arrests spanning Long Island, Queens, and the Bronx. Among those arrested today is 29-year-old Ricardo Rafino Jr. of Sayville, who reportedly sent runners into Queens every other week to buy thousands of bags of heroin to supply Suffolk users. Rafino was already out on bail awaiting sentencing for a prior heroin possession conviction. The district attorney's office says over the course of the investigation, the distribution network brought approximately a million bags of heroin into Suffolk County, with 23 people arrested. The heroin was distributed under names including Sweet Death, Starbucks, and Knee Bender. Nassau County's largest union has reached a tentative agreement with the county on a new contract they say will save millions. The agreement comes amid an ongoing review by a state monitoring board of the county's finances. The CSEA union has reportedly agreed to change the pay scale for future employees, and that could represent a savings of $60 million over the term of the contract. The union has 56,000 full-time employees and nearly 7,000, including part-time and seasonal workers. County Executive Edward Mangano says the agreement shows that a possible takeover of county finances by the Nassau Interim Finance Authority is not needed. NIFA's next meeting is scheduled for tomorrow. An elderly Nassau County woman was found dead this morning after a fire engulfed a two-family home in Mineola a little after midnight. Dana Arshin reports. A devastating fire ravaged this home on Jackson Avenue in Mineola early this morning, leaving a 71-year-old woman dead. And there were fire engines, police up and down the block, you know, uh, the fire was coming way up over the, this, uh, what do you call it, electric poles here. Laverne Schenkel lives just down the road from the two-family home where the fatal fire took place and says the other residents of the home, who she believes to be two women and a child, escaped the blaze unharmed. The fire started in this home behind me early this morning. According to officials, about 85 firefighters worked throughout the morning to put out the fire. And neighbors say smoke filled the streets and it was terrifying. I was sleeping, I woke up to smelling smoke and I panicked, I got everybody up in the house. In fact, Schenkel says the smoke from the destruction spread so quickly she thought there was a fire in her own home. Although she did not know her neighbor caught in the blaze, Schenkel says the tragedy has left the neighborhood feeling sad. I mean, I feel heartbroken about that, you know, somebody lost their life. Officials have not yet released the name of the victim. In Mineola, Dana Arshin, LI News Tonight. The Valley Stream man convicted of murder in the drunken driving crash that killed a wedding limousine chauffeur and a seven-year-old flower girl is appealing that conviction. 
A lawyer for Martin Heitken told a Brooklyn appeals court yesterday that a jury was wrong to convict him of depraved indifference murder, saying instead the jurors should have considered a lesser charge, manslaughter. Heitken is serving 19 years in prison, including an extra year for tampering with a DNA sample used in his trial. Prosecutors contend that Heitken showed depraved indifference by driving the wrong way for miles along the Meadowbrook Parkway following a night of heavy drinking, slamming head on into that limousine. And police say two women fighting in an SUV escalated to the point where one of them rammed the other with the vehicle several times, breaking her pelvis and leg. It happened yesterday afternoon in Valley Stream. Police say 20-year-old Melanie Spinopoulos of Franklin Square got into a fight in a car with her 21-year-old cousin. The fight then spilled onto the street. And police say when the victim wouldn't get back in the SUV, Spinopoulos aimed the vehicle at her twice, hitting her and knocking her down before finally driving off. The victim was hospitalized for her injuries. Spinopoulos has been charged with first-degree assault. A Nassau County public safety officer has been charged with cheating the county out of thousands of dollars by inflating the number of overtime hours he worked. Police say 26-year-old Joseph Wigninski of Seaford falsified payroll computer data, entering overtime hours he didn't work for over a year beginning in 2009. He reportedly stole approximately $6,000 from the county. Charges include 25 counts of tampering with public records, falsifying business records, and official misconduct. An attack on a man walking home from the train station landed two Long Island men in jail. They say the victim was walking home from the Lakeview train station on Woodfield Road in Lakeview early last night when two men approached him knocked him to the ground and demanded his money. When the 22-year-old victim convinced them he had no money, they fled, but the victim was able to give police a description of the two. And 20-year-old Rashad Cameron of Rockville Center and 18-year-old Bobrick Gions of Lakeview were arrested nearby a short time later. Both have been charged with attempted robbery. The victim reportedly was not injured. Well, it was a mixed day on Wall Street today. The Dow finished the day down three and three quarters points, but NASDAQ was up one and three quarters points, and the S&P was up under a point. NYIT's LI News Tonight continues after this. homeowners who disagree with their property tax assessments can learn how to challenge them at a workshop at the East Meadow Public Library on Thursday, February 3rd at 1 p.m. For more information, call 516-794-2570. Cardiovascular disease is the number one killer of women. Wear something red to raise awareness of heart disease on National Wear Red Day on Friday, February 4th. For more information, call the American Heart Association at 516-450-9111. See a screening of my Spectacular Theater about a man who finds refuge in a Beijing movie theater for the blind at Abilities in Albertson on Saturday, February 5th at 8 p.m. For more information, log on to www.realabilities.org. Or celebrate the Chinese New Year at the Ward Melville Heritage Organization Cultural Center in Stony Brook on Sunday, February 6th from 1.30 to 3.30 p.m. For more information, call 631-689-5888. If you have an event you'd like included on the LI News Tonight community calendar, send it to Tonight at nyit.edu. Press play to start your future. Learn the industry. Use the technology. Become an expert in television reporting. Journalism. Radio. Digital film. Public relations and advertising. Television production, digital graphics, 
a beautiful state-of-the-art campus. A road to the job you've always wanted in the media capital of the world. Communication Arts at NYIT. When can you start? Headlines around the world today. Russian Prime Minister Vladimir Putin is vowing retribution for the suicide bombing attack at Russia's busiest airport that killed 35 people. Putin, who has built much of his reputation on harsh statements, said today that retribution is inevitable for yesterday's airport attack, which left another 180 people injured. Russian news agencies that reported his comments did not say whether he specified what kind of retribution or against whom. No claims of responsibility have been made for the attack, but suspicion is likely to fall on Islamist separatist insurgents. An official Chinese newspaper is dismissing a report that China applied technology taken from a downed U.S. airplane to its own stealth fighter program. Earlier this month, China staged the first test flight of its J-20 prototype stealth fighter, which could one day challenge American air superiority. There are suspicions China obtained some of its technological know-how from an American F-117 Nighthawk shot down over Serbia in 1999. But China dismisses those claims. Meanwhile, in Hawaii, a federal judge sentenced a former B-2 stealth bomber engineer to 32 years in prison for selling military secrets to China. And officials say an explosion has ripped through a passenger bus in the Philippine capital, killing at least two people and wounding six others. A suburban Manila mayor says the explosion was so powerful that it punched a hole in a nearby concrete fence. Authorities say the damage caused by the explosion indicated it was a bomb. Metro Manila's police chief says an explosive must have been placed in the middle of the bus based on the vehicle's damage. A New York City architect who's believed to be the last surviving member of Frank Lloyd Wright's original Tally Essen Fellows has died. A friend says Edgar Toffel died last week at his Manhattan home at the age of 98. Toffel designed the first Presbyterian church house in Greenwich Village and helped save two interiors from Wright's Francis W. Little House in Waseda, Minnesota, before it was demolished in 1971. The living room is now at the Metropolitan Museum of Art in New York, and the library is in the Allentown Art Museum in Pennsylvania. Toffel was reportedly the last remaining Taliesin Fellows trained at Wright's Wisconsin home beginning back in 1932. A new report paints a grim picture for Atlantic City this year. The research report by a major casino analysis company predicts Atlantic City's 11 casinos will continue to lose money and market share this year, even as the competition all around them prospers. It's predicted Atlantic City's casino revenue will fall this year, while revenues at casinos in Pennsylvania, New York, Delaware, and Maryland will increase. The report projects that Atlantic City, the nation's second largest gambling market, will have lost a staggering 41 percent of its business share since just 2006. Well, we had a scattered snow shower this morning. The high temperature today, however, was up into the upper 30s. Tonight should be mostly cloudy with a low down around 30 degrees. Tomorrow, snow changing over to a wintry mix with a high in the mid-30s. For Thursday, morning snow showers, a high in the mid-30s. Friday, partly cloudy, with a high around 30 degrees. And the outlook for Saturday, chance of a few snow showers with a high in the mid-30s. And that's it for NYIT's LI News Tonight. I'm Ken Eckhart. Thank you for watching. We'll see you tomorrow. Have a good night. Thank you.